Hello Magic fans, welcome to another unboxing video. So we're actually going to be opening a Commander Legends Dungeons & Dragons Battle for Baldur's Gate pre-release kit. So my local LGS has uh, these take-home hits, so you get a pre-release pack and then two set boosters. So yeah, let's see what we're going to get. So similar to uh, the Streets of New Capenna set, the pre-release kits do not are, you know, minimal plastic in their packaging. So there's a pull tab. You pull down the pull tab here. And then you'll see the box. There is some nice art and you can get some tokens that you might use when you're playing. So these larger tokens that you can pop out over here. Uh, I guess they're you can like reminder or whatever types of counters. And then you'll have these smaller counters as well that you can use for like, you know, maybe, I don't know, shield tokens or plus one, plus one counters when you're playing uh, during the pre-release. So I think that's a nice addition, a good use of packaging. And then the PR kit, when you open it up, uh, what you're going to get, you're actually going to get a D20 instead of a spin down. So because the, the, the set does have mechanics where you're supposed to, um, where you're supposed to roll a d20 and that's why they included the d20 so you don't have to use a spin down there is a nice uh, one of these dividers that you usually find in the you know pre-cons for commander it's a theme divider for the dnd &D commander legend set there is a small insert showing some information about draft tips and about faceless one which is a in, you know, similar to the Prismatic Piper from Commander Legends, that in case you don't have the colors that you drafted as a commander, you can use the faceless one as your commander for certain colors. And then, yeah, it has some information about Baldur's Gate, uh, Upper City, Lower City, and Outer City. So those maybe who are familiar with the online campaign or maybe online game, you know, this will remind you or reminiscent of, of the game. Okay. So here, let's see. So it does have paper packaging now for the promo or the uh, pre-release card. So I, I particularly like that they're starting to use these uh, paper packs. So it does include the Undercity Dungeon as well as the initiative. So in case you draft some cards during the draft, then that's, you know, you can use that. And we have a Illithid Harvester as our pre-release card. So it does have the 2022 foil stamp over there. And of course, it's a return of the adventure mechanic that we last saw from um, El Throne of Eldrain. Okay, so you get three draft booster packs and each draft booster pack contains 20 cards. And uh, unlike other pre-releases, the Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate you're, you're meant to draft the set instead of play as a sealed event. That's why there's only three packs. Uh, each pack contains 20 cards, and you're meant to pick two cards uh, per uh, per round, or you know every time you pass the pack, you're supposed to pick two. So some mana rocks, uh, Evolving Wilds returns, uh, Minimus Containment, I think it's from AFR. It's okay, let's take a bit of a look here uh, they do have these orbs of dragon kind that you know if you're doing some sort of dragon tribal it adds mana and then when you use it to cast a dragon spell you get to scry too it is a colored artifact mana rock um that costs three generic you know mana value is three but then it gives you an extra ability every time you cast a dragon or dragon spell it's a return of the showcase frame that we last saw in AFR. Okay, so our rare for this pack is Nine Fingers Keen. It's the Gates Commander. We get a cloak with hermit, oh, a reflecting pool. Oh wow, an owl bear cub. So so far, it's like three rares in this pack, and then we have a foil acolyte of Bahamut. Bahamut. I, I thought that the owlbear cub is particularly cute. So owlbear, it's a two and a green for a three, three bird bear. And whenever owlbear cub attacks a player who controls eight or more lands, 
Look at top eight cards of your library. You may put a creature card from among them onto the battlefield tapped and attacking that player. And then put the rest at the bottom of your library in a random order. So next pack. So they have these, uh, like similar to the Thriving Lands, they have these gates. So Black Dragon Gate, for example, enters the battlefield tap. And then you have to choose a color other than black. And then you can tap this for black or that other color. So I think it's good mana fixing for, for this set. Swift Foot Boots. Okay, ba Baylor is our mythic. It's a three red red for a 5-5 five, five demon. It has flying. And whenever Baylor attacks or dies, you choose one or more. So each mode must target a different player. So target opponent draws three cards and then discards three cards at random. Uh, target opponent sacrifices a non-token artifact. And Baylor deals damage to target opponent equal to the number of cards in their hand. And then we had we have a foil sidereal gate and a copy token. Lightning bolt. Call of the Void. Uh, each player secretly chooses a creature they control and a creature they don't control. Then those choices are revealed. Destroy each creature chosen this way. It's for a black for a sorcery. Okay. And then let's open our two uh, set booster packs. So art card. Uh, basic land, uh, similar to AFR basic lands, it's like themed to maybe, you know, be a jumping off point to the start of your journey if you're playing D&D. <laughs> Another nine fingers keen, okay. A noble heritage, it's a background, uh, legendary enchantment. Uh, one in a white when a, this when, so commander creatures you control or you own have when this creature enters a battlefield and at the beginning of your upkeep each player may put two plus one plus one counters on a creature they control for each opponent who does you gain protection from that player until end of turn and then we have our foil etch card it's Jan Janssen chaos crafter it's red, white, and a black for a legendary creature, Gnome Artificer 3-3. Three, three. It has haste. And then you tap, sacrifice an artifact creature, create two treasure tokens. And then tap to sacrifice a non-creature artifact, create two 1-1 one, one colorless construct artifact creature tokens. We have Altar of Bale, a ball. Uh, it's one and a black for an artifact. You pay two and a black and tap it to exile a creature you control. And then you return target creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and you can activate only as a sorcery. And then you have the adventure mode. It's bone offering. It's two and a black for a sorcery. It, you create a tap for one black skeletal, skeleton creature token with menace. Okay. And then we have World Gorger Dragon as, as our list card. So it's the first time I actually uh, have this card. Uh, we were talking about you know, the, the combos around this card, but I said, oh, I don't have a copy of World Gorger Dagger, but <laughs> now apparently I do. Fun of fun. What I kind of miss is that they they no longer had the stats for the creatures, unlike the art card in the AFR the original AFR set, because I particularly like that one. So uh, etch card is Sword Coast Sailor. We have Earthquake Dragon. Miracle Lord of Bones. And a Foil Fang Dragon. Okay. So yep, yeah, that's our pretty short unboxing video of this PR kit. 
and hope you enjoy playing in the PRs in your area. If you have them, you know, in, in person play, I'll, I'll try to have some, uh, to play some games tomorrow at my local LGS and see how that goes. Thanks for watching.